Why do some people perform better at work than others? It's a simple question, but to answer that, you might need a five-year research of five thousand employees and managers, or you can read this book, "Great at Work" by Morton Hansen. In this book, the Wall Street Journal bestseller Morton Hansen reveals the answer can be applied by anyone looking to maximize their time and performance. He did a groundbreaking five years research and got his seven work smarter practices. This book is a gift from my boss. He bought、uh, hundreds of copies for all employees. Why? After reading this book, I found the answer. Let's check it out. Do less than obsess it. Let's start with a story. In October 1911, two teams were racing to be the first humans to reach the South Pole, the last major place on Earth not yet discovered. The first team was led by Robert Scott, Royal British Navy commander. The second team was led by Norwegian Royan Admundsen. They knew each other's presence, and after the well preparation, the race began. I don't need to spend too much time to describe the journey. How hard it is! It was really hard. Scott and his men, exhausted, and finally arrived at the South Pole. Miserably, found the Norwegian flag was whipping in the wind. Admundsen arrived 34 days ago and was the first humans arrived. Scott's team not only lost their race but also lost their lives. On their way back home, the storm pinned them down in their tents. There, they would die. Only 11 miles from the next depot of food and shelter. So one leader and his team achieved the extraordinary, while the other team perished. And Scott's team was even bigger and better equipment than Edmondson's team. Why? In this book. Morton reveals the answer. Edmund's team was the one with the narrow scope. Scott's team had three times the man and twice the budget. He used five forms of transportation: dogs, motor sledge, submarine ponies, skis, and man hauling. If one fails, he had backups. Edmondson really rely on only one form transportation: dogs. Why did the one without backups not fail, but the other one failed? It was not not just because of dogs. Scott had dogs too, but Edmondson really concentrated on dogs. He spent two winters with Inuit to learn how to master dog sledging. Also, his research suggested that、uh, Greenland dogs, Greenlander dogs, perform、uh, better than Siberian Huskies. Then he traveled to Copenhagen to sort out the expert dog runners to join his team. Several more skilled than he, he picked the best dog runners, best dog for the journey. Scott, on the other hand, was so busy arranging five separate transportation methods that he couldn't focus on any of them. Once moving on the ice. He struggled to coordinate convoy. Long story short, Edmondson's team was traveled was traveled 15 miles per day, and Scott's team 11 miles. Edmondson had choosing the one method and mastered it. He had done less than obsessed. This story tells us the few the first rule of being great at work: do less than obsess it. Focus means too active at work, choosing a few priorities and then dedicating your efforts toward excelling at them. So for me, I always spent myself spread myself too thin. It was okay for happy, but not good at work. When doing more, often I execute poorly and cannot allocate enough attention, just as Captain Scott. I find. There are two things that lead me to doing more trap. I always say yes to other people, and 
I might lose myself in distraction and temptation. So what are the actions? I have two. Learn to say no to other people and use some tools such as Kanban, tomato clock, or other things to tie myself to the mast. This is do less and obsess it. Second rule: redesign your work. I'm a designer, and for me, design is a daily job, 24/7. Design is not meaning that you're sitting in front of a desk for a few hours and get some impressive graphics or fancy animations. You can design your lifestyle, your diet, your way of conversation, your work process, or the way you use your phone. And you can redesign your work as well. When redesign your work, focus on one thing: value. A good redesign delivers more value for the same amount of work done. But what is value? In this book, Morton、uh, Morton defines the value of work by measuring how much other benefit from it. So he has an uncommon opinion: start with goals when planning an effort was run. We need to start with value, then process with gold. With goals, he even had an equation: the value of a person's work equals to benefits to others multiplied quality multiplied efficiency. Here's an example: as a UX designer, I do user interviews with our customers regularly. After each interview, I will share the study and findings with my team. It helps them to understand the cup. The customer better, and so that we can improve the product of the、uh, for the customer's need. If I can redesign my work process to improve these two factors, I can improve the quality and efficiency of this regular user interview to create more value. But how? I used to take notes with notebook while user interview. Interviewing and recorded audio to the for the interview. After that, I will listen to the audio recording and add more notes. It means an one-hour interview. I will take another 1.5 hour or two hours for note taking and half an hour to input notes into the doc. Then created a report by those data. How to redesign my work process to improve it? After a few testing and practice. Now I just taking notes with the tool I use for creating reports while interviewing、uh, customers. So here's how I type on my laptop, capture the key information during the interview, and then add more details on the notes after the interview. So anyone doesn't attend the interview can understand、uh, the findings. By redesign my way of taking notes, I can find. I can finish the user interview and create a report with only half of my previous time. I improve the efficiency, so as the value. So it's your turn. How about your work? Are there anything you can think of to redesign at work or create more value? I'm sure there must be some. Think about it. Find them out and redesign. Fight and unite. What's the one thing in common in all different companies? Meetings, meetings, and more meetings. Even during the COVID-19 quarantine, video meetings are a big part of working from home schedule. We all have experience of attending some group meetings, which don't solve problems but only waste of lost people's time. Sometimes there are even many inter- intelligence in the room. So normally, the problem of those meetings is lack of critical thinking and thorough debate about plan. It's assumptions and the weaknesses. We don't we don't need teams to conduct vast number of meetings to get their work done. Actually, you can't. It will never happen. Rather. We need smarter team meetings, where people debate regularly and commit to decisions at last. This is the fight and unite principle. 
When teams have a good fight in their meetings, team members debate the issues, consider consider alternatives, challenge one another, listen to minor minority views, and test assumptions. Enable every participant to speak out without fear of retribution. In one short sentence, we need encourage constructive conflict. But how to do that, especially for Individuals' perspective. Again, Morton gave us a few tips about meetings, and I agree in each one of them. So, show up to every meeting 100% prepared. Craft an opinion and deliver it with conviction and data. Stay open to others' ideas, not just your own. Let the best argument win, even if it's not yours. And often it isn't. Feel free to stand up and shout, but never make the argument personal. Always listen, real,、uh, really listen to minority. Never presume consistency.、Uh, never presume agreement for the sake. I think the leader of the team should focus on making people feel it is safe to speak up in the meetings. Make fair for everyone, and everyone in the team need to show their. Opinions,、um, transparent in the meetings, then commit. So for me, I'm a good listener, but was not a good fighter. I used to choose not speaking or asking questions at meetings, just because I don't want other people think I'm stupid to ask some silly questions. And also, the mindset of my English is not good enough as a second language. Blocked me from asking questions or showing disagreement. Then I realized I was wrong about two things. The first, there's no silly question. The second, second language is not a problem. The mindset is right. This is the fight and unite principle. Another essential thing we need if we want to be great at work. How are you doing on this one? Are you able to debate in the team meetings and then commit to decisions? All right, this is the three major things I would like to talk about the book "Great at Work" by Morton Hansen. There are more principles and tips in the book if you are interested in improving your performance at work. Find book and read it. One more tip from me. The improvement is not; it's a continuous journey. You can't just read a book in the weekend and become totally a new person on Monday. That's Hollywood movie. But if you can, you do can improve yourself step by step. If you always get stressful, for example, to talk in the meetings, try to ask yourself to speak at least one minute in the next meeting. If you feel like you are doing too many things, just pick one thing from your calendar tomorrow and remove it. So do it step by step, but continuously. Thanks for watching, and hope you like this one. If you do, please share it with your friend and colleagues. And also, if you haven't sub- subscribed my YouTube channel, Bear Talk, now it's a good time. Smash the subscribe subscribe button below, and you won't miss the next video. Right. Have a great day or evening, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.